This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. Get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Parrott, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast. Run, Barry, run! But it's not Barry. <laughs> That's all right. I have some thoughts on the show. <laughs> How could you not? Oh, hello, kids, and welcome back to another episode of Comic Capers. We know we're going to talk some Flash. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, it is. Hey, y'all. It's a little Hellfire. Wow, look how quick we got today. So, today we are discussing Flash 9, 10, and 11. For the late 80s. But specifically, let's say late 1988, February, March, April, 1988. All right, yeah, I wanted to start with the TV show. I have thoughts. I mean, we'll get to it. They had some uh, set photos. Uh, stuff to come but like right now as of this recording this week's episode was the killer frost on trial episode which i mean i thought daniel panabaker killed it but it's just like i don't know ever since the uh abracadabra stuff it seems like we haven't got been getting a lot of barry or the flash it's ready guys i'm sorry he's got a baby and a wife he's ready the same thing happened to steven and now I'm just saying, they oh, get a wife, me. they get a kid, they're stuck in Canada. Oh no. Their quarantine's really hard. Are we gonna get another uh death episode eight eight? Kid eight, Flash! Eight, eight. Too bad you screwed over freaking Kian Zonsdale. He would have came back and done something that, for the show. Is that why we're bringing in uh impulse? Chester and everybody, yeah, probably. And and uh Jessica Kennedy's coming back as Nora. Maybe yes. it's Flash Next Generation. Who knows? Yes, they had the tornado twins. <laughs> Kind yeah. of, sort of, but not really. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. Yes, they had set photos of, yes, the Flash, Excess, and Impulse together, I guess, fighting Godspeed. So that's pretty cool, but can we talk about Carlos and freaking Tom leaving? Yeah. Carlos, I'm happy about it. I hope they kill that character off so he can't change his mind. He's been very wish y'all, y'all know I used to be a Cisco stan, but, like, Carlos's attitude and wishy-washy behavior has made me go, hey, if you're not happy, get the hell out. Well, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, and I think that's why we have so, like, that's why we had uh, Ralph, and then after that thing happened, we had to bring in Chester, and I'm just like, can we just bring back Hartley? Can we bring back Pied Piper? Who knows? I mean, yeah. That was the original plan for, you know, Team Flash. He was supposed to be a part of Team Flash, and his schedule didn't permit, and now it does. Oh, wow. So let's just fix that. Mm -hmm. Unless he has... (laughs) I was going to say, do you see him another drop now? Maybe that's the thing. Because the character is gay, and you know the CW loves gay characters. I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, that was the big news. Yeah, Tom and uh, Carlos are leaving. This is their last season, so. Well, season seven, you know, that that's respectable. That's like a standard TV contract. That's what most people hope the show goes to. So, you know, we can't all be supernaturals. But yeah, I mean, I know nothing, but I mean, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Carlos, uh, if they're going to kill I off. think they're going to kill that character. I think they're going to have freaking Tom Cavanaugh reprise the reverse flash roll, give him that vibrating hand, and then Barry gives him the vibrating hand, and we never see those characters again. <laughs> oh my, because yeah, because I think they said Daniel Panabaker made some kind of statement. There's going to be like a big Barry, Caitlin, and uh, Cisco episode coming up, and uh, she said it's good, but fans are going to be sad, so. Good. Yeah, something connected to one Because team, the original Team Flash isn't hasn't been working for a while for whatever, mostly because they have been ignoring Caitlyn. So they got, they've, they've given her something to do this year, but I feel like it's a little too little too late, especially with that back and forth with Killer Frost. Like it's just kind of burnt me out on the character. And again, it's like there's so many characters, we really can't focus on anyone, even our main character, it seems. <laughs> He's never been the main character, let's be honest. I know, I know. Honestly, this is the reverse Flash show, and we're all just kind of, we just kind of just wait for him to show up. Let's just be honest. I mean, this season, Tom's barely been in this season, so I don't know where, uh, 
yeah. Is that why they're like, I don't know what to do this season? Basically. But no, the writer's room has gone through another change and it's very obvious and they're, they're struggling. And then, you know, pandemic, all the things that they wanted to do, they probably can't. So, I mean, it's tough. I mean, I will to give it a shot. I just want more uh, Flash. I mean, the TV show called Flash. It's kind of like how when you wanted more Arrow in the TV show called Arrow, huh? Exactly. Instead of Felicity and everybody else. <laughs> unless because of, of the pandemic they're doing, like, you know, like the, the Killer Frost stuff because, you know, Barry, you know, Grant's off filming that uh, other stuff already. I don't know. I don't think so. Huh. But I'm like, I think he just needs more time because, like I said, it's very much when your main lead is single, when you cast him, and then he gets married, and then he has a kid, and he wants more time. And especially now because they probably can't be on set because of COVID. Yep. Don't want to chance it. You got a kid at home, you know? And it's just so weird, the writing. It's like, I know that I know we need to find those other forces, but it's like Barry's not going to be in, in the courtroom. <laughs> really? He's like, it's not my trial. Been there, done that. He's like, Mama Cecile got this. It's all right. She got this. Poor Iris, really? <laughs> Ugh. Poor Candace Patton. I thought she was going to punch out the Speed Force this week. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's, it's, it's coming to that eventually. Her and the Speed Force have some issues they need to work out. She's like, he's my man. Not yours. <laughs> Stop torturing us. Thank you very much. Oh, man. The Speed Force tried to fry her this week. I was... She's like, we are, in fact, not the Flash. Barry is the Flash. I mean, she almost went there. She's like, you may be the lightning rod, but I'm the lightning. <laughs> like, um, I think it's the other way around. <laughs> yeah. Nah. I I'm just ready for the... Look, listen. Y'all know I've got Berlanti Universe burnout. Like, I just... I have no passion for it. I don't like things that just go on for the sake of going on. They have no plans. Unless you're really going for that 10-year plan. But we've already kind of botched Crisis. So I'm not looking forward to that storyline. <laughs> if that's what they're trying to get to. So I don't think they've come out and say it. But thanks to Crisis. Or, uh, yeah, so, I mean, we kind of hinted at it. You and I hinted at it. That's like, so are Impulse and Excess brother and sister now? Anything's possible. I mean, we were excited for the Tornado Twins, so... I mean, unless thanks to time travel, unless they do go the comic book route, and, like, you know, it wasn't Barry and Iris's daughter, uh, Impulse's mother, so unless they make excess his mother. Well, and, you know, uh, making sweet, sweet love to the timeline runs in the family, and that would actually be pretty cool. I know, but I don't think... I don't see them doing that. I don't think they would go there, but I think that that would actually be cool and make it, like, kind of more comic book accurate because Lord knows the TV show needs more comic book accurate. We <laughs> make sweet, sweet love to the timeline. Oh, that's a classic flash drop. I love it. I miss it. I miss those times, Philip. You get a vibrating hand and you get a vibrating hand. 2011 was a great time to be a DC TV fan. That's all I'm saying. What? <laughs> 2011 to like 2014. Perfect time to be a DC TV fan, especially Arrowverse fans. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Anywho, we got an issue to talk about. <laughs> we got three to talk about. Yes. Oh, and uh, yes, the tied into the TV show. Uh, yes, it's the we got the Flash, uh, the origin of Chunk. Boo. Whereas the title of this issue is The Chunk. The Chunk. Rude. Couldn't get away with that in 2021. I know, exactly. Body shaming. <laughs> Again, same team. Writer Mike Barron, penciler Jackson Geis, uh, anchor Larry Malstead, colorist Michelle Wolfman. Hmm, any relation? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Or is that just his pen name when he wants to get work? <laughs> well, it's a, color, it's a colorist. So I don't know. Does he's, you know, the you know the he color. doesn't want anybody to know. I'm just saying Jamie Foxx changed his name because it sounds like a, I'm just saying things like this happen all the time. Could be. <laughs> Letterer Steve Haney and editor Mike Gold. Wait, hold on. I gotta look this, Michelle. Uh... He's like, I just want to make sure this isn't no well, shit. There's a wink on her name, so I wanted to see, but there's really... Oh! oh! No, it's... It's, it's uh... his wife. It's his ex-wife oh. ex of Marv Wolfman and mother of his She didn't daughter. do a good job. He fired her from life and the job. <laughs> oh, geez. 
yes, his ex-wife and the mother of his uh, daughter. Oh, nice. So. Keeping it all in the family. Does his daughter do I feel like his daughter doesn't do anything, but that would have been cool if she did. It didn't say anything about any uh, comic work, so yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Nepotism. Like everything else in American capitalism. Although you could, or you could say, you know, that's how good she is. He, she's the ex-wife. I think he's giving the ex-wife work. <laughs> <laughs> or, or unless that's like, oh, hey, I can't pay alimony, but hey, get you a job. Oh, he can pay alimony. <laughs> Come oh, on. Yeah. All right. So, yes, this one is from, as I said, February 1988. Issue 9, The Chunk. Wally West is in Manhattan seeing his psychiatrist. Thank God. I know. Hey, what's your problem? Uh, my father's a manhunter. <laughs> uh, keep screwing me over. <laughs> exactly. Seeing his psychiatrist, Dr. Owen Slade. 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 <laughs> We're stupid. <laughs> Discussing discussing issues with his father being a manhunter. Suddenly, as you do, I know. My father wanted to conquer the universe. You'd be oh. like, are you any relation to Martian? <laughs> <laughs> now that would have been the plot twist. <laughs> Your father is white. Is he a Martian? Uh. Suddenly, they learn that the diamond exchange across the hall is being robbed by an obese man who appears to be eating diamonds. I can relate. <sighs> Whoa, you eat diamonds? For breakfast. I'm Kanye. <laughs> I eat diamonds and, and, and uh, crap uh, engagement rings. Exactly. Uh, yeah, don't accept that ring, Marnell. Uh... <laughs> He manages to knock down Wally, who has sprung into action as the Flash, by spitting diamonds at him. Somehow, the obese man manages to disappear during an apparent earthquake. Wow, really? <clears throat> He's so fat, Thanos is snapping three times. <laughs> Whoa. He's got his own gravitational pull, is all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, Yo, mama's so big, Thanos had to snap twice. Don't at me. It's all jokes. I don't care about people's physical appearance. I mean, look at me. I'm in a hoodie and a hat in Florida in the summertime. Because because the air conditioning set to 60, but yeah. She probably sets it for the optimum temperature for those dogs. So yeah, why she, she's all bundled up. Yep. If that's not love, I don't know. What it is. And, and yeah, yeah, don't be at in little hellfire. She, she's the size of a 13 year old girl. <laughs> uh, back at his mansion, Bruce Wayne, Ballin! Bruce Wayne, I mean, Wally deals with his mother's dissatisfaction about Tina McGee living with that with him. Yeah, uh, a d divorcee. <laughs> I don't think she is. Sweet baby boy. <laughs> I don't know if she's even divorced. Isn't she just separated? It's like, yeah, I mean... Ooh, living in double sin. I know, it's oh. like, you're, you're trying to kind of trying to make the mother, you know, look like a biatch, but it's like, you know... No, I, no offense. I wouldn't want, if I had, a, like, a 20-year-old son, I would not want him with somebody that's, like, 35 and, like, Get separated married. from a crazy guy. Exactly. Um, yeah. That just tried to kill him, like, two issues ago. <laughs> Exactly, and again, it's like, you know the married woman's bad enough, but yeah. And again, she, you know, she just coincidentally uh, moved in with them after he won the lottery. So exactly, the the mother has every right to be suspicious. Exactly. Uh, he receives a request to appear before the M Middlehampton City Council. Ooh, not Northampton, not Southampton, but Middlehampton. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the next day, the obese man from the Diamond Exchange steals an armored car carrying 1,900 pounds of gold. I wonder if it's going in the prison purse. Oh, oh, damn. Smuggling it out. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> in your booty. Nobody tell Rob. It's in his prison purse. 
Why would he tell Rob? Uh, so yes, he smuggles the armored car. Uh, uh, after getting in the driver's seat, the car suddenly disappears. He did put it in his prison purse. <laughs> Told you. Oh my! It's in his prison purse. Uh. Wally investigates the previous day's robbery and runs into Dr. Slade. We as investigating. Remember, he's supposed to be a scientist. He's supposed to be a physicist, remember? But we are already... No, they don't remember that. We're not issues in it. We've, we've already forgotten that. That never comes up again. <laughs> it's the Peter Parker syndrome. Yeah, I'm smart, but you know. At least they try to mention it with Peter Parker that sometimes, the, yeah, Wally, it's like, yeah, no, nope, nope, nope. It's to, no. it's to separate him from Barry. I'm pretty sure it's like, oh yeah, because Barry was a scientist too. Well, I know, and, and it, so it, was it, Jay Garrick. So it's kind of a thing. At any point at the, after this, if he needs scientific help, either goes to see somebody, or he's like, oh, I read R Barry's books really quick, and I can retain the knowledge for a few minutes. Ro Wally was robbed. Can we all just agree? Yeah. Because they so wanted to make him so different from Barry, so they made him like the everyman. You know, he can't be too smart. You know, like a redheaded stepchild. Hate to say it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he runs in the. Hey, he had his own book for thirty years. What do you want? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, hey, he almost got to two fifty. He got to like what two forty seven or something. <laughs> Again, robbed him. He I was know. robbed. That's no surprise me. I was like, wait a minute. They could have like dragged that out for three months and give him a two fifty. Nowadays they would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, you're gonna get this double sized twenty dollar book. You're gonna he, get it. Even if they had to pump him out twice a month, yeah, they would have got him. The <laughs> Burn shade. <laughs> hey man. Butter Hey man, look they they did Detective Comics twice a month until they oh, got. Oh, I know. Now now the number is higher than action. So huh. <laughs> the shade of it all. <laughs> Talk about redheaded stepchild Superman. I mean, they might as well make him a redhead. Now that that's the movie we wanted to see, redheaded super Superman. Sorry, sorry, Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> Interested. I want to see Jimmy Olsen as Superman. <laughs> Shut it. Oh my. Damn. That's the story we should be looking for. Yes, love what to see redhead Superman. Gingers. All right. TikTok confirmed my confirmation, by the way. It, it's a thing. <laughs> so we didn't cover, I mean, we discussed this a little last night, but so if they so black Superman. So do you want it? You want Michael B. Jordan? Or would you rather have somebody else? I mean, look, and I, don't at me when I say this. I'd rather have Michael B. Jordan than some random British black guy. Oh. Look, look. I'm tired of the British black guys coming in and taking black guys' American work. Like, I, I'm just over it. So if that's the only choice that we have for the Americans, I'm team Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> hey, hey, it's not just the black guys, man. Them British guys are coming in. And yeah, them. Christian yeah. Bale, Henry Cat, like, the list goes Robert Pattinson. Oh, wow. The list goes I'm over it. I want American superheroes for American superhero characters. That's all I'm saying. You people are worried about them southern borders, man. We need to throw up a wall around uh, London, uh, England. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Let's get it. Let's get a. Let's get a wall in the middle of the uh, pond. You know, as they say, oh, across the pond because they're so cool. Hey, <laughs> hey, we could satisfy a lot of people. Throw up a wall around Hollywood, man. No, no <laughs> bricks inside. No, no, no Australians. Those are the real threats. What else was to say? First, we first we keep the uh, the British out, and then we come, then we come for the Australians. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Sorry, Liam. Most of all, because we all know Liam's the best. Hemsworth, fight me. You can fight me on that. <laughs> Although, but back to Wally. Yeah, poor, poor Wally West. <laughs> Wallace, uh, come on. Yeah. His mom named him Wallace. What do you expect? I know. Uh, oh, sorry, Wallace, that I know in real life if you're listening. <laughs> oh, my. Well, say, is that like an older name? Because it's like, I think he suffers from the same curse as Dick Grace, and it's like he was born in an era where it's like, yeah, that old name was all right. But yeah, now it's like, oh, really? I literally only know like two Wallaces in my life, and they're juniors. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's while he's investigating and runs into Doctor Slade. Slade mentions a uh, colleague of his who treated the young. We have to start saying no relation. <laughs> <laughs> Why 
<laughs> or maybe he is, and we just never got around to it. <laughs> uh, who treated a young boy who seems to match the characteristics of the robber. Oh, Lord. Remember. Uh, did, did he just violate his, his oath? Yeah, but do you have doctors to... in the DC universe suck. Yeah, but don't, do you have don't you have to report it like if you think someone's gonna hurt somebody or if it's like a like a crime? If they have, if they are say they're gonna commit a crime, but not after they've committed the crime, I think is how that works. Hmm. Somebody get Charlie Oster on the phone. I'm sure he would know. And it's not his patient, right? So hey, you can't even worse. Stitches <laughs> uh... get stitches. All right, so again, it's a new arc, so we need an appearance by a Titan. So with the aid of Cyborg, Wally's able to identify him. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> Wally's able to learn his identity. Chester Runk. Poor kid. Name is Chester. Like you're just asking to make a villain. I'm just saying. Get it? Cause that sound like Chunk Chester Runk. <laughs> See you, Runk. <laughs> like Otto Octavius, and you're surprised he becomes an octopus man. See, like he's just into you know ladies with eight boops. It's Whoa. not really. <laughs> it's not really the octopus. <laughs> something between your legs like that? I'm just saying, Aunt May's got something crazy going on down there. <laughs> We're doing me now. Back to DC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Wally takes Tina out to a nice dinner. See, that's the only but very holdover that we have. You gotta gotta satisfy these hangry women, you know. Oh my, <laughs> that's what I get from all these uh, flash issues. All you women always seem to be hungry. Uh, in a platinum super uh, Wonder Woman, eat this nigger. You're not giving me your name. Never forgive, never forget. I will bring that up every freaking episode until <laughs> I have an apology. <laughs> Those are gonna be the final words on her deathbed. Oh, DC, F you. <laughs> Wonder Woman Snickers. Uh, so, yes, they go to dinner in a platinum exhibit at the local art center before the city council meeting. The council. I wonder what's going to happen here. Precious metal. Oh, uh huh. Plot device. They go to the <laughs> local plot, plot device exhibit. Uh, the council requests that Wally leave Middlehampton because his presence has resulted in extremely high liability insurance premiums. Finally, somebody said it. <laughs> yeah, but it's these rich people, these stuck up rich people. The it was Bruce Wayne, he started it. <laughs> oh, the meeting is cut short by a robbery at the art center. It is Chester Runk. Get out dun, dun, here. Dun. Exactly. Who refers to himself as Chunk? See, he gave it to he gave that nickname to himself, so it's fine. I guess yeah. it's like Fat Amy from you know uh, those acapella movies with uh, Anna Kendrick's. Oh, that uh, uh, was that Pitch Perfect. Yeah, her name uh, wasn't even Amy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh... I'm just waiting for Wally to come right in and say, do the truffle shuffle. <laughs> Wally is the kind of guy that would say that. <laughs> just not for nothing. He really is. Uh, he explains the bullet holes this big. Uh, oh, my God. We got to do that somewhere one day. Goonies. Uh, classic 80s movies. Yes. Make it a playlist. <laughs> you, you talk about judging people. I judge people who say they've never seen the Goonies. Me too. Or the Lost Boys. I'm just like, really? Keith or Sutherland, that Pete Keith or Sutherland, and you ain't seen that? Oh, even as a kid, man, anybody in the neighborhood says, like, yeah, I've never seen Goonies. I'm like, get your ass over here. We're going to watch some Goonies. Or the Sandlot? Like, come on. Yeah. Uh, kids. <laughs> so back to the other chunk. Yeah, so he explains to me, <laughs> he explains to Wally how he swallowed a matter transmitter. <sighs> man. <sighs> <sighs> And needs to consume highly dense materials to keep himself from imploding to an awful place. Uh, New Jersey? Now that would be Gotham. Gotham is DC's Jersey. <laughs> Change my mind. I don't know which is worse. Come on, Phil. Say Gotham. Uh, 
Chunk catches Wally in a bear hug and transport the, transports them to another place. Oh, wait. Do you have the Marnell drop yet? Because I was going to say, this would be the perfect drop uh, time for that drop. He is a little hard to handle. <laughs> no, not yet. She didn't send me the audio yet. <laughs> oh, my. You just want to hear your girlfriend's voice. That's all. Uh, uh, no, he catches Wally in a bear hug and says, don't be so difficult. <laughs> Let me love you. <laughs> be a princess. Hey. All right. So what do you think of issue nine? Um, Chunk. Why? Like, why? I mean, we, we said it before, but uh, I mean, they so want to be like, oh, yeah, this isn't Barry. You know, this isn't like, Rogue. Wally's Rogue Gallery kind of sucks for a little bit. And again, to be what, honest. Why did you, if you knew you were going to make it Wally the Flash, why would you retire Barry's Rogues, man? Well, he didn't have a personal connection to them per se. And I get wanting to explore a new creative avenue, but if this is what you're going to do, I mean, release I'll the Rogues Gallery, baby. <laughs> And again, I'm saying you can do a mixture of old and new rogues, and it's like what I thought that would be interesting with you. I thought that Weather Wizard would have been perfect, you know. Yeah. And again, it's like do do some old rogues because it's like, hey, wouldn't that be interesting? They're up against the Flash, that you know. You it's know, like it's you not. know that Batman Beyond conundrum. While he definitely isn't Barry, and he will ridicule the hell out of you, <laughs> he will confuse the hell out of you because he is not Barry. Or he, bu- or he punches you in the face like five hundred times. Yeah, like, he's not gonna talk to you. He's not gonna hold your hand. Yeah, <laughs> he's I mean, gonna punch you. They're all like, "Oh, the old Flash would never do that." And be like, "Yeah, I ain't the old Flash." <laughs> exactly. Like I would have preferred to see that. Uh, but Trump was kind of like interesting with how like his predicament because it's like it's like how did you swallow that why so you're really just like trying to live so you know that's kind of like the conundrum for wally because he is so you know hot-headed and doesn't really think things through a lot Mm -hmm. so this guy is actually like he supposedly he's supposed to be like that sympathetic villain you know yeah um but yeah, I mean, he's he's like like a classic, you know, you know, you know, got caught in a scientific experiment now. <laughs> yeah, out of control menace. Just send him to Star Labs. So, uh, I don't know, man. Like I said in the comics, a lot of times they're e- they're the evil factory. Yeah, true. In the TV show too, but you know, we don't talk about it. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, holding prisoners without trial, things like that, you know. Shipping them off to uh, the old uh, Suicide Squad factory on uh, Lian Yu. <laughs> no toilets. <laughs> oh, that's oh yes, Charlie yes. I mean, they explained it eventually, but only because people. <laughs> oh my lord! But again, the Molly's mother has reason to be worried. I mean, come on, Tina, you really got to dry off out of the pool like that? Come on. <laughs> I didn't even know they made bathing suits like that in the 80s, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were all one pieces in the 80s. Or two high cut uh, bikinis. Like, that's it. I didn't know they made those kind of bikinis in the 80s. Well, it's his own private pool. I'm, I guess we're just lucky she's wearing anything. I don't think we could have got away with that in a flash book in the 80s. Well, that's honest. what I'm saying. It's a comic, too. So, yeah. This is not, this is not Spider Man drawn by uh, Burn, okay? Oh. <laughs> Hey, the, th- hey, hey, those books got me through some tough times. That's no shade. Hey, oh. <laughs> or, McFar- or McFarlane. You know, Mary Jane had the big Definitely hair. McFarlane. <laughs> Mary Jane would have the big hair, but no clothes. <laughs> the hair's so big. Because- <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> like Peg Bundy. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, again... I thought the art was good on this. Yeah, I did enjoy the art. Although Chunk looks kind of weird sometimes. But Chunk's Chunk, you know? That's true. Like, that's the thing. It's also like that conundrum with, like, Colossus and Juggernaut. Like, when you're drawing these really big guys and you're like, okay, I want to go far but not too far. Oh, I went too far. (laughs) I think it's one of those things. Like, ooh, got to pull that back. We get that final panel reveal where he transports him to. That looks like New Jersey to me. I don't know about you, but... Scum of hi- uh, uh, hive of scum and villainy, <laughs> definitely. 
I mean, they call it the Garden State, ironically, because it's where all the, everybody dumps their trash on the on the Northeast. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, landfills are pretty until the summer when it starts to smell. So. <laughs> It's nice and green. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, all right. Should we get to the next one? Let's do it. Look at this cover. <laughs> the Savage Speedster. That looks like uh, something from the 60s. I'm sorry. That looks I know. like them trying to be Star Trek. <laughs> I know, man. He's pulling some Jim Kirk here. Definitely. All right, so issue 10, Chunk in the Void. Whoa. It's uh -huh. in his prison purse. Hey, -o, from <laughs> March 1988. Uh, I should just stay on that button. It's in his prison purse. Okay. <laughs> Wally West arrives in the desolate dimension Chunk has transported him to. He meets Dr. Jared Parker, Karen Prius, and Eric Gunderson. All people who had offended Chunk in some way and been sent to the dimension. I know some of these people, man. They're like the wasn't the one guy's like, yeah, I don't think he liked my shirt, so he sent me. <laughs> Wait a minute, this is DC's Nightcrawler. Why didn't I think of it? Oh my! Except for Nightcrawler has the decency not to leave people in his little stranded hell dimension. <laughs> Nightcrawler's the best X Man, and I don't care what anybody else has to say about that. Better than Storm? Yes, better than Storm. Mm. Better backstory, more sympathetic, and actually more fleshed out, but that's just because Storm's a black woman. <laughs> I love Storm, but they got some work on that character to do. Well, that's, I mean, again, we're getting into this because, hey, kids, uh, starting soon, every other month, we're going to be doing uh, X Men over here. Uh, but I don't know. It just a lot of the female characters were robbed originally, and they only really kind of yeah. started making it up in the 2010s. But like like Kitty Pride, for instance. But like Storm, it seems like, you know, they, they'll they have her in the book a lot, and then all of a sudden, nothing. And then they you got to wait a couple teams, and then, you know, she's back big time, and then, you know. That's because a lot of writers aren't interested in writing for Storm because they can't relate to her, because comic book writers are, for the most part, even now, white and male. So, <laughs> and American. So they really have nothing in common with the baby girl, so. I guess, but it's like, you know, let's give her some Wolverine attention, you know. I mean, I, I just say her, Bishop, and Forge need to have their own team, and it's fine. I'd be okay with that. Hey, hey, that's an X Factor I could get behind. Come on. I mean, call me Marvel. I have ideas for that specifically. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, it's the only book I would ever want to write at Marvel. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, After a brief fight with some cannibalistic criminals... <laughs> Wally. Yummy. Oh my. <laughs> Chunk's looking yummy to him. <laughs> oh my Your god. Your skin's soft like a lady. <laughs> they have resorted to cannibalism. How long have they been here? Ah, about 20 minutes. <laughs> but you know, those are people from New Jersey. Uh, <laughs> Poor Charlie. Shh, don't say his name. Where do we mean now? Hard. Hard. Uh, the cosmic rod. Uh, so uh, is that what Barry calls it? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Screw the treadmill. Get on this cosmic rod. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> and we never saw the cosmic treadmill again. <laughs> so mad about that on the TV show, by the way. <laughs> well, they kind of did that in the comic too. I mean, they kind of realized uh, like, oh, you can do. You can just run and do it himself. <laughs> Uh, yeah, after fighting the cannibals, Wally's taken to a small community of 16 people that had been built over the previous two years. <laughs> Damn, two years. Wally is convinced he can return everyone back home and heads for Chunk's hideout. He is able to uh, relate to Chunk by showing him how he too must consume large amounts in order to keep operating. Yeah, but you look like you, Wally. It's not really helpful. I guess people don't understand that. Well, I think he was, I mean, he was kind of like, you know, it's the kind of the opposite for, them. for me. I got to eat just to stay, you know, at, you know, normal. If I don't, you know, I'm going to die. 
Yeah, Chunk doesn't want to hear that. I, I hate to break it to you, Wally. Chunk doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> Chunk, well, Chunk agrees to help send everyone back. Wally heads back to the community so he can begin bringing people to Chunk to be sent home, but it is under attack by a horde of criminals. Again, it is New Jersey. Are we sure it's not Detroit? Hello. Don't at me. I have family in Detroit. Don't <laughs> at me. That doesn't shock me. What shocks me is you have family? <laughs> Shh, nobody tell them. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Yes. Don't worry about asking me for money. I'll be after that Hellfire Fortune, I know. <laughs> oh my lord, I'm just looking, scrolling down the notes here. It's like <laughs> locations, chunks void. Uh, uh, you know what? That's what oh. I dubbed my office. I'm going to change it right now in Alexa, chunks void. <laughs> oh, they're going to say Lilith's void. <laughs> no, chunks void. <laughs> gonna... Turn on lights and chunks void. <laughs> uh, oh my. <laughs> I was going to say, man, just we're gonna rename it and she Alexa would be like uh you've already named your soul that little boy <laughs> exactly honestly <laughs> that would be the bedroom <laughs> hey that's right that's right boys go in but you don't come out well not vertically anyway <laughs> allegedly <laughs> for legal purposes allegedly <laughs> Sorry, no one tell Rob, but you come and then you go. <laughs> the roses look so lovely right now. That's the strangest chew toys your dogs have. I told you they only eat organic. <laughs> anyway, back to Chunks Boy. <laughs> Where did you get those organic tennis balls? Um... Yeah, so, and yeah, this one was weird. No, I, I liked it better than the first issue, but of course, the first issue's set up. Yeah. But I did want to see more of his mom and Tina. Like, I feel like Wally's interpersonal conflicts are way more interesting than Barry's ever was. Mm hmm. And that's where the, the strong shoot suit should have been for him, but they kind of like, I don't know, they kind of like, Stay away from it. They bring it up, and it's like, okay, and. <laughs> but it, yeah. oh, wait, they're women. Why do we care? <laughs> yeah, like, the, honestly, that's the vibe. Yeah, remember the annual we read? I mean, that <laughs> women are soft. And <laughs> Yikes. The 80s were only like 40 years ago, guys. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this. <laughs> that's scary. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that we deem bad now. Even the stuff that we read from the two thousands, it's a little, especially Rob Liefeld. That stuff's scary. Oh my god, kid, <laughs> you want to scare yourself? Read some Chuck Austin X Men. Oh, traumatizing! <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, traumatizing. Stacy X. Yes. <laughs> or his suit, or his Superman. We, we don't <laughs> talk about that. I don't even think Tyler talks about that. <laughs> I think he wiped his memory of that. Uh, I know, and I know people have been desperate because they've been here two years. But man, right away, Karen's like telling Wally, "Man, you, hey, you be good to me. I be good to you." <laughs> I told you it's prison, man. <laughs> oh my, co-ed prison. <clears throat> Chunk doesn't discriminate. He doesn't see gender or sex. Just the fact that you've offended him—that's why you're there. <laughs> But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm get, so well, at least while he's an actual hero, like there's no question about it <laughs> for this issue. I think that's what they struggle with uh, starting. It's just like, oh, don't you think there was a better way to do that, Wally? And he's like, well, it's my way or the highway. But at least he's like definitively a hero in this issue. So it's something he, like, I talked not... to the villain, got him to do what he wanted without punching him. That's true. Yes. Just like the TV show, he didn't have to throw a punch because he's got a big heart. No punches to the face. Not in the face! Oh, man. Do you ever just think about original 1990s Flash and what would have happened if it had a season two? I, I do. I wonder if John Wesley Ships knows what they had planned for season two. I feel like asking him. 
I thought I heard. I thought I read somewhere. Weren't they planning on doing more costume rogues, like like the actual? Yeah. Thing? Yeah. And I know they had something big for Mark Hamill's uh character. Oh my god! To, I, to come I, back again, I watched that first run. Yeah, I, was, I, I would have watched the hell out of the season. It, it's like getting to be summertime, so like I'm starting to find all my old DC TV stuff. It's just like a habit that I do. So I'm on like episode three. Mm-hmm. That's, <laughs> I know. Oh, I yeah. I got the I got that on DVD. I should go back and watch it. Uh, yeah, it's hard to find now. <laughs> but when the Flash, the Flash TV show first came out, it actually wasn't that hard to find. Mm-hmm. But now it is again, unfortunately. But Wonder Woman is uh, after this one, so I'm looking forward to it. All yeah. three seasons, and we're now going to talk about the TV movie where she was blonde. <laughs> trying to remember if that's still on HBO Max or not. It might be. Oh, okay. I know they got a bunch of DC stuff over there, like all the animated stuffs over there. Like the Timbers animated stuff or the other stuff? Yeah, but well, oh. both. Yeah. It's so hard to navigate. I just, I already have it on DVD on my Plex, so it's just like easier. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Like Batman the Animated Series and Batman Beyond. Yeah, I have, a, I have all those on like DVD or Blu ray. Yeah. So is Chunk like, t- is his body tied to this landscape? Because it's like that big altar he has to like feed stuff to. I think so. They don't really explain it. It was uh-uh. just for, I think it just, they thought it was cool, so they did it, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> I know, it's... Uh... I mean, it's comic books. You really don't need a lot of logic for it. Unless you're Charlie Esser. <laughs> and again, just with these gangs of cannibals, I don't know, where they going for like a mad... I like that touch. It's like, well, that makes sense. It's just not like look. he's teleporting food in there. Just the look, are they looking, are they like going for a Mad Max vibe? <laughs> I mean... One of the best uh, apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic, you know, landscapes that you could pull from. Absolutely. And again, these issues are still in the 80s, so. Ah, I bet Mel Gibson misses the 80s. <laughs> ah, back when he could pull a paycheck and no one knew how he felt about other people. Back when he was still pretending to be Australian, even though he's born in New Jersey or something like that. Oh, oh well, there's... <laughs> <laughs> What kind of psychopath lies about being born in New Jersey? Oh no, wait. I don't if it was it was either New York or New Jersey. I forget. One is lying Australians. Yep, New York. There we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, you lied. It's not from like New York City. It's like from like up north past Rochester, so I'd lie about it too. <laughs> oh. Hashtag fight me, you upstate New Yorkers. <laughs> They lied to where he was from, so what's his next move to uh, marry Alec Baldwin? Hey, oh, ouch! <laughs> well, you don't hear nothing from him no more. It's just like, well, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, don't be hard on my wife. Boom, <laughs> silence. We got okay. another Baldwin to worry about, and she's married uh, to Bieber, so <laughs> oh. that's the only Baldwin we actually care for. We're like root, actively rooting for her to leave Justin at this point. <laughs> uh, chunky. Canada, can you come get your boy, please? Seriously? <laughs> yeah, not a joke, not a punchline. Come get him. Ah. <laughs> uh. On that note, um, these are just kind of average, but I did like like what they were trying to do with Chunk to make him a different kind of villain. I just felt like the execution needed just a, li- a little more explanation, a little more sympathy. Yeah. I don't know if they were planning to do more later, but I mean, Chunk does show up again, but you really don't explain like his power, you know, like really go into the explanation of his powers and stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, here, let's, get, let's just say get the issue 11. I love that cover. Yeah, that's a pretty cool cover. You've made him angry. Hangry, even. <laughs> All right. Flash number oh, the Flash number 11. Uh, yeah, put some respect on it. The Flash. April 1988. <laughs> Title, Chunk Barges In. Is that a boat uh, joke? Is that a boat joke? I think it is. <laughs> All right. We'll get that. Uh, after absorbing the criminals and Dr. Parker, <laughs> he ate a psychiatrist. Uh, that says more about him than the doctor. That's all I'm saying. Freudian. Uh, to, uh, 
to to a, even another dimension. Yeah, because Chunk says something like, "Oh yeah, there's a worse place than this," but we never see it. It was that bad. <gasps> Maybe it was New Jersey. <laughs> Jersey stuff. <laughs> no, the other way I'm going to give up. I still have hope that Cory Booker will call me one day. Stop it. <laughs> no. The other way we're getting canceled is we make jokes about Chicago. Oh, true. <laughs> By the way, yes, he can get it. <laughs> oh, Cory Booker? Cory Booker can get it. There you go, Phil. Add it to the collection. <laughs> Isn't he still with... Uh... Shh. I was going to say three-way little hell fire. Come on. No, no. That's like the only one I'm not going to share. I would never share Cory Booker. I'll wait till he's broken up. Oh, my. Oh, oh my God. <gasps> Can you imagine? I mean, if his political career keeps going, he could be president one day. <gasps> exactly my point. First Sorry. Lady Little exactly Hellfire. First Lady Little Hellfire. I want this in the worst way. <laughs> And I promise I won't put parental advisory labels on anything. <laughs> oh man! I won't talking? make lunch, school lunches terrible. I will mind my business. <laughs> oh, just you wait, kids. A whole bunch of stuffs get legalized. <laughs> Damn straight. You'll be able. You're gonna be able to smoke a big old blunt on top of a hooker. Oh my gosh! <laughs> as long as we can tax it, that's all I'm saying. That's the American way. Just tax it. Yep. That's right, kids. We we need we need uh, more money for our schools, our roads. Come on. How do you think we're gonna get it? Exactly. Call me, Corey. Hell, <laughs> America. If you want to get it, Lil Hellfire needs to get it. <laughs> All right, I'm moving to DC. Bye, guys. Uh. Uh, so yeah, so after uh, Chunk eats Dr. Parker, uh, Chunk agrees to transport Flash and the rest of the community back to New, New York City. New York City. New York City. <laughs> That's where the best salsa comes from, and you can fight me. <laughs> if you're too young to get that reference, get out. <laughs> Google it, kids. They travel in Chunk's boat, which arrives upside down in the harbor. <laughs> Wally is able to rescue everyone. Apparently, he has been missing for one month. Ooh, time moved different. <laughs> yep. Was it, were they in the quantum? Oh, the, hey, man, the crew has been loving it, bro. <laughs> were they in the quantum realm? Oh, please, it's the Hamptons. What criminal? Uh, White collar crime all day. Oh, well, yeah, well, he was talking <laughs> a lot of white collar crime. The police want to arrest Chunk, but Wally is able to persuade them to release him into his care. Yeah, he what? We, what? Want to, we want to arrest him. Oh, come on. He just ate a psychiatrist. Okay. Time served. Uh, well, he should have said a lawyer, and then they'd be like, all right, give him a medal. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's just like, yeah, he, he ate a bunch of criminals well, and a psychiatrist. And it's like, oh, yeah, you're, yeah we're going to spit him out now. Like, can we borrow him? We got a couple guys we want to get rid of. That that's the plot twist. I know. Uh, Wally returns back returns back to his mansion to see that his mother is in the process of completely remodeling the place. Okay, uh, I think she was the gold digger the whole time, but that's just me. Seriously, uh, like he's gone for a month, and that's what you're gonna do? Okay, I know you're not gonna go. You're not gonna like. Wally does not have the best parents. I'm just saying. I mean, I guess you could say she was like, oh, yeah, he, she knew he'd take care of things. But <laughs> I mean, on a sin, more sinister note, she might be like, oh, he's dead. It's all mine now. <laughs> exactly. That's why she didn't want Tina around. You ain't going to marry him and get his money. It's mine. I birthed that boy. It's mine. Ew. He also begins. And, what? And that's why you don't date a mama's boy. Oh. <laughs> you have to have a guy that loves his mother, but. You don't want a mama's boy. <laughs> or, or, or one who thinks Thor can beat Superman, right, Lil? Hulk. Hulk, sorry. <laughs> that, that's instant grounds of termination. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know what kind of crazy guys you go. I've seen all the movies. I know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, do you see those memes going? Right? Did you see uh, that memes in the Moon Knight group? I or? love the Moon Knight meme because you know that's what's going to happen. And I'm like you freaking noobs, you freaking plebs. Don't you try me. 
What's a Moon Knight than a year from now? I love I've it. always been a Moon Knight fan. I've watched that show 90 times. <laughs> <laughs> what the f yeah make sure you go listen to into the night the moon night podcast that's right kids Disney, y'all better call ray ray if they don't call ray ray it's gonna be a travesty i know even though he even though he jumps on some bandwagons i love that man Shh, don't 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 ruin his chances i know i know but seriously yeah. though yeah, kids, go go listen to Into the Night, the Midnight Podcast. Fight me. I need I, I need a, I need an interview with Oscar on Into the Night. If it doesn't happen, I'm gonna be upset. Oh, nice. Petition. I'm gonna start the petition after we're done recording today. <laughs> hey, Ray Ray, if you need some co-hosts for that one. Oh my. Uh, Call Noel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Phil. <laughs> Oh my God! If if Ray if Ray interviews Oscar wearing a tank, to, they're both wearing tank tops. You will have to you have to lock your doors to keep Little Hellfire out. Uh, a mess. Um. Yeah, the mother's remodeling the house because she's a gold digger. Uh, he also begins to notice the tension between his mother and his girlfriend. T- You're just noticing the tension between your mother and Tina. Boys are dumb. <laughs> also, it's been a month of just two women going at it. You know what I mean? Ooh, yes. Yeah. Mom versus girlfriend ain't no way. Yeah. We're- not miss dating other people's children. <laughs> Oh my lord. That's true. That's true. Uh and Wally didn't notice because you know he was getting what he needed. Exactly. Hey man. And then when he was done, he was running off playing hero, so he didn't have to deal with that. Hey man, you release that poison, everything is all uh... what is, I can't even say what they call it. That's for the Patreon. <laughs> Stay tuned for the return of Wade's world, kids. Oh uh, yeah, Deadpool Max 2. <laughs> yeah, boob windows and long boxes. Uh, okay, Mister Gilchrist in the in the, of the Middle Hampton City Council agrees to meet Wally and Chunk at the police boat pier the following morning. Wally hopes to help Chunk take advantage of his abilities by making garbage disappear. However, Rude. however, the test run making a get it kids a barge full of trash disappear results in a massive whirlpool and the disappearance of Chunk. There's a joke in there somewhere. Um, Chunky, go down the hole. Whoa! I was gonna say, is he in? in, in yeah, is he in his own prison purse? It's in his prison <gasps> purse. Could you imagine? <gasps> he bends the laws of physics. He's in his, in his own prison purse. Uh. So, well, what did you think of this one? It was weird. It was like, wait a minute. Why did you... Three issues and this is the setup and then he just disappears into his own prison purse? Really? Whoa! Well, he he does come back, but... I know, but I'm just saying, like... Three issues and that's the send-off they give the kid? Modern comics could never. (laughs) Modern comics better not ever. I'm just saying, even if he just... They only give you one issue, and then we've never heard from them again. Then 20 years later, some random hipster writer brings back Turner of the Century. Oh, my. <laughs> but no, I was going to say, even if he uh, even if he does disappear at the end of the story, they're at least going to do stretch this out for six. I mean, come on. I mean, he would have been in Chunk's Void for like two to three issues at least. Absolutely. He would have like had to eat <laughs> a human to stay alive and deal with it for man pain. That girl that came on to him, he would have had to literally put her in the refrigerator and oh. her or no, they would have slept together. Maybe she would have got pregnant. Then she would have died before they came out of the void. Yes. <laughs> Nobody call Mike Grail. <laughs> <gasps> I do not need his take on Wally. <laughs> Burn. Oh my god. And then it's, you know, Tina finds out and it's like, oh, you cheated on me. I was in another dimension. It doesn't count. I was gone for five years, lady. <gasps> for five She's years. She's back with her husband, plot twist. For five years, I was stuck in hell. <laughs> Nobody. 
nobody tell nobody tell Brian and nobody tell Mike Grail. I do not. <laughs> I repeat. <laughs> I had to become someone else. Something else. Cannibal Wally West. <laughs> Can. Can I'm the hungriest man alive. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had to become cannibal eating dry humper Wally West. <laughs> uh. Oh God, yeah, it's um, but these these all average out to be a C. They're pretty average. The artwork saves it. Um, yeah. I don't know. It just still they still don't quite have Wally's personality down. Yeah, it seems to be. It seems the the flip flop. Yeah. Sometimes he seems really he seems mature. Other times he's just like totally out of it yeah you know honestly wally works best with the team i hate to say it i felt like he got overlooked a lot but i feel like he's better with team dynamics yeah because remember because well, they bring it out of him you know him by himself it's like he's left to his own devices yeah like in that way like in the mark wade's run when he you know he's with linda and like piper is like his tech guy and he's one of the characters that needs that around him and got like max mercury and some other speeds yeah that was really cool oh but he does get a hero's welcome hey <laughs> better you're living for free sister no <laughs> <laughs> no 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 feminist don't don't go there it's a joke it's all jokes <laughs> do not at me <laughs> I mean, anyone who your significant other disappears for a month and it comes, you know, comes back like, oh, I don't know. I know some some really old married people that would be really happy not to have to deal with their partner for a month. I'm just saying, I know a lot of people that got divorced because of COVID forced them to be at home together for way too too long. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. So, <laughs> not everybody. <laughs> Happened to one of my best friends, actually. Well, they're both my best friends, so it's a little awkward, but yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> well, we know someone personally. Yeah. Well, yeah. Two yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> and no, it's not Rob Nosies. <laughs> Although Martha could do better. Call me Martha. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring Molly. You can bring the cat. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, my God. We are getting canceled now. <laughs> I can't. It's all jokes for legal purposes. It's jokes. Why did your eye drift over to my box? Satire. On that note. Satire. That's DC. You're going to have to put this episode behind a paywall. (laughs) So we don't get it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's going to put this up on the SMG Patreon and uh, put it in the newsletter and everything. Oh, my God. (laughs) I, for one, believe in the power of the Southgate love. How dare you? <laughs> nice. <sighs> so, what's the next issue that Chunk shows up in? Um, It's a while, right? Let me see if they mention... Uh, let me get a Chunk. He... Uh, doesn't see the issue number, but yeah, he begins. He reappears later and begins a business. Yeah, because remember, once Wally loses his money, doesn't Chunk like start coming into it? Because his disposal business is just like yeah. Oh, and again, why wouldn't it be? It's like yeah, you're not sending anything. You to don't have to pay anybody. Yeah, I mean the EPA loves you because you know you're not dumping stuff anywhere. It's you know it's just like oh, it's, it's all going to the moon. That's the plot twist. It basically, just magically disappears to the, as far as anyone else knows. It's like oh, cool. Boy, wouldn't America love that right now? <laughs> just saying, or any industrialized nation that's producing a lot of waste and trying to pass the buck to the consumer by making us recycle, reuse, and reduce. Um. Consumerism is not really the biggest problem. It's the companies. It's corporate. Exactly. Sorry. Oh. Not to be on a soapbox. Well, I mean, we've talked about this before, but yeah, I mean, even the big companies are giving them tax breaks to recycle. I mean, what's the biggest cause of plastic in the world in the oceans? Fishing. True. Not not our not our uh precious little, you know, soda cans that don't even have the rings on it anymore that they made us cut up when we were children. <laughs> Uh, that's true. 
All right, so let me see. Pull up the schedule here. Uh, oh, so yes, next next week, uh, the devil you know returns. It's, a, yes! it's that time of the month again, kid. <laughs> Nobody tell DG. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's Mr. Uh, DG Chichester will return to discuss Daredevil 380 with us. If you haven't downloaded the newsletter for this month, please do. And sign right up. Right inside yeah. on the issue that we're going to talk about. Go subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, oh, and then in two weeks, uh, we've got a bunch of issues because we made a little uh, change here. Yes, uh, we're doing our. He loves doing things on the fly. Don't you love them? <laughs> Uh, the Calypso stuff will be next week. Yes, the Calypso, the Darkness Within 1 and 2, Flash Annual 5, and Justice League Europe Annual 3. Can you smell the crossover, kids? <laughs> well, that, it, it? yeah, and all of our DC so shows will be doing an Eclipso. So, yes, I'm torturing everyone both. Uh, Spread the pain! Spread it! And then talk, You're and welcome. Then, Speaking of crossovers, in three weeks, uh, yes, the Double You Know returns for Daredevil Annual 5, part of our uh, Atlantis Attacks crossover. That one's all Lilith, yes. Uh, it's fine. It's not that bad, honestly. No. There's some fun stuff in there. And then in a month, kids, for Call Me Capers, we're going to be crossing over with uh, those boys at Sector 2814. Get ready! Guardians of Ola Collide! <laughs> the, fir the first two parts of Guerrilla Warfare will be here on Call Me Capers, followed the next day by part two on Sector 2814. The Dance Squad! <laughs> And if, so yeah, we're gonna jump ahead a little. Yeah, do Green Lantern thirty and Flash. And of course, Lilith had to be involved. Flash issue sixty nine. Naturally. And then again, read Green Lantern thirty one and Flash seventy because yes, part two will be on Sector two eight one four. And that and the young Kona child should be here by that point. She was due on Tuesday. It's already Saturday. She's holding on. She's holding on. I too was like a week late. I didn't want to come out. Oh yeah, that was Luke. I think it was a week late. <laughs> it's like, not comfortable in here. What do you mean? <laughs> waited until the last possible moment because the doctor's like, oh if, yeah, if he doesn't come by in the morning, yeah, come in. But that night. Ah, <sighs> kids. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he's like, but he's a, he's a, he's a dad, he's a dog dad too. So, you know, can't discount that. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Go subscribe to Matt Kona's Instagram. You'll see. Yes. He is a dog dad. <laughs> All right, kids. So plenty of good stuff coming up. So send, please send us your thoughts. Hey, Russell, Ray, I'm, I'm not seeing any feedback. Ooh. They're tired. Russell's super busy. And of course, Ray is super busy. I know, man. They're like, although I do have a, uh, some Eclipso feedback from Russell for next time. So look at him uh, understanding the assignment and giving us feedback. Russell's such a good guy. I know. I can't wait to blow his mind with Blossom Twin villainy. <laughs> hey, hey, whoa. Hey, I, I couldn't uh, cancel any of that Eclipso stuff, Lil, because Russell was like ordering Eclipso issues to send us feedback, though. So. <laughs> nice. Yes. So, and again, you're welcome, DC. Uh, <laughs> You know what we should do? Hmm. Are you allowed to gift subscriptions still from DC Universe? Um, I have to look. I, I, don't... I know you. I know you can with Marvel Unlimited because I've done it. I don't know if they still do it, but I've done it before. Yeah, we'll have so to I wonder look. if they can do that. Then we, can, if they do, we should give it away. Mm. I'll look into that. I was gonna say, be like, hey, send in feedback. Maybe we entered to get a subscription. <laughs> Hey, Ray Ray, it should be coming any time now. DC Universe Infinite. Poor Australia. They get everything late. I know. He just got his uh, issue. You think they would have to ship it by boat or something? Like, bro, it's just an electronic. <laughs> it's just access to the website. How hard could it be? <laughs> exactly. Well, he just, I think yesterday, just got his issue of uh, Will's Crossover Division. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Because Will's been waiting. He's like, oh, I want to see how long it takes to get to Australia. How long did it take? I think it took a couple. It had to have taken at least a couple weeks. So I swear. I've had... I know. Like, I, I don't order from eBay from Australia anymore because it literally took, like, I want to say it was 10 weeks when I ordered uh, this Brat bund this Bratz bundle from Australia, like, two years ago. And that was before the pandemic, so. I mean, I don't think it was that bad, but I swear it had to have been at least three or four weeks. <laughs> wow. 
Yeah. I'm sure we can oh, ask. Ray, Ray. We can ask. You gotta move to the States, buddy. <laughs> Seriously, Ray. Come on. Be in the same time zone, man. We can all do so much stuff together. His wife's like, absolutely not. <laughs> Join your triplets. Come on, Ray. Join us. <laughs> They're bad enough influence as it is. Uh, so, yeah. So. Send us your thoughts. Email capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPE. Capes. That's right. And remember to follow Comic Capers and all of our various shows on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, find links to this YouTube channel. Uh, find links to our Patreon. Again, like we said, the return of Wade's World, now completely uncensored. Oh, Lord. Boob windows and long boxes, our hard R movie reviews, uh, our superhero Cribs is coming. That is going to be great. We should yeah. uh, source that out and see if anybody wants to like throw out heroes that they want us to do. Nice, yes. And so, so yes, all of that completely uncensored. So if you love these shows, yes, go go. So please subscribe to the Patreon. You'll get us completely uncensored. <gasps> you know what? Can we please do Green Arrow first? Because I want to use that Harley Quinn joke. Okay. About how he calls it the arrow cave, but really it should be the quiver. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, go subscribe to the Patreon. Links to that. Links to merch. All Stay hydrated, my friends. No worries, business, what you're drinking at 9 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Uh, links to everything all in one place. That's Linktree, L A N K T R dot E E slash Cape St. Lunatics. And please remember to support our sponsors, Tweaked Audio. Get yourself some fancy headphones. That's right. HD audio quality. That's right, kids. Hear that madman crack climb out of his own prison person. Crystal clear HD quality. Just glad we don't have smell of vision. Oh. Uh, so, yes. And then go pick up Pod Life the book. Or, no. No. Hunt a killer. That's what I meant to say. Hunt a killer. <laughs> yeah. Michelle ahead. Gray definitely needs your help to. Hunt a Killer. It's an escape room in a box. A great way to spend a Saturday afternoon alone or a great uh, option for a date night at home alone. Hey, old. <laughs> Hunt from the side of the killer. Uh, anyway, yes, and then go pick up Pod Life, the book, now in digital paperback. Audio version coming soon. For those of you who like to listen to your books in the cold white north. Uh <laughs> And when you get that and anything on Amazon, use the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Helps us support this show, the Southgate Media Group Network, and that the best Southgate of them all, Molly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> to say that very happily married couple, Rob and Martha Southgate. Make it rain. So says Master Do. What did you say? Mark my words. Will Hellfire. Um, if you nerds want to at me on the interwebs, you can find me on Twitter at Will of Hellfire, on Instagram at Will of Hellfire 69, and of course, come tickety talk with me on TikTok at Will of Hellfire 69. I don't have any content, but I have 175 followers. I love you guys on TikTok. <laughs> wow. Mind if I slam your butt in the pokey lady? <laughs> Said Wally to Tina. <laughs> Although you're a young lady, maybe people are like, oh, when's this, gonna, when's this TikTok going to turn into an OnlyFans? <laughs> I'm not more now. <laughs> oh! No, but I, I plan on making some Supernatural stuff, so that should be cool. Because I, I can only bear to talk about Supernatural one minute at a time. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, kids. 15 years. I can barely stand the fuck about it more than one minute at a time. 10 years too long. <laughs> Ooh. She's still there for all, all every episode. Okay. Alright, so yes, come back one week. Daredevil 380 with Mr. Mr. DG Chichester. And then in two weeks, Eclipse O. <laughs> they never bothered to give Wally a real catchphrase either. I don't appreciate that. I think his catchphrase was "My name is Wally West and I'm the fastest man alive." <laughs>
He did it before Perry. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I still have to Perry. All right, kids. Remember, come back next time. We will be back in a flash. Back in a flash. Because we got a thousand podcasts.